What is up people, this is YSHQ and in this video I will be showing you how to mod the BIOS on an RX 480. So the BIOS provides a set of functions that are used by a software program to access the system's hardware. And the BIOS that we are going to be editing is the video BIOS or the VBIOS. So there are two main reasons, one to increase the hash rate for mining and second is to decrease the power draw. Now how you do that? It is just by changing the memory straps and the clock speeds and the voltages, that's all. But keep in mind that after doing this, you may either break your card and you will definitely use, lose your warranty. So keep that in mind before doing this. So let's fire up GPU Z now. Now this shows all the information, the type of memory, the memory brand and so on. The main thing that you want is the sensors. Now this has a lot of sensors and this software shows all the sensors available. But the ones that we require are the clock speeds. The, uh, the GPU clock speeds, the GPU memory speeds, the temperature and the power draw. And there are a lot of different tabs which shows everything in detail. And these are the clock speeds which we are going to be modifying. And so on. Now let's fire up Sapphire Tricks. I am using this software because I am using the Sapphire RX 580 Nitro and you can see a review of that over there. It is a simple software and multiple variables can be changed, the fan curve can be adjusted. It can be set to a constant speed or the graph. I use this graph and this is not the original graph, I modified this graph. It is very simple to modify the graph or the fan PWM control. These are the settings. Over there you can see the number of GPUs connected and modify them individually there are a lot of functions over there and you can check them all out next the information which is similar to that shown in the GPU Z uh, software This is also similar to GPU Z. It shows everything. Next, the glow and the brightness and all these. That was to basically change the LED effects. And these are the profiles that you can load and save for specific applications. So let's start with the BIOS mod. Open up ATI Flash, all the links will be down in the description. Now this software will be used to copy or save the ROM of the BIOS from the GPU. Now make sure to run this as an administrator or it won't run. Now clicking on save, it will ask for a file name and give it any name that you want and add and add .rom in the end. And Make sure to save this file in the same folder as ATI Flash. Then click on continue and that's it. You have the co copy of it.
So to mod the BIOS, you will need a software known as Polaris Editor. Now this software is simple to use. It has multiple functions inbuilt. Now you can either change everything manually or you can just change the clock timings by using the fun push button. And it would set the clock values or the timing straps based on the type of memory that you have. Now this is the tool that you will require to mod the BIOS if you want to do it by yourself. But if you don't, then there are multiple sources available online from where you can download the BIOSes for your specific uh, GPU and the type of memory. Now keep in mind that the memory type and the GPU type is very important because if you change it, then it would completely destroy the GPU. Next, when you click on load, it would ask you to select a room. Now this room would be anything or the modified room. Now if you click on program, it will start programming it. This might take a few seconds to a few minutes and it shows that it's hanging but it's not. It's just working in the background. When it will be done, it will just it will just pop out a dialog box like so. Your EV BIOS has been programmed successfully. If you click on OK, it will ask you to reboot, then just reboot it. Now let's check if, it's, if there's any difference. Let's have GPU Z and Sapphire tricks. This is pretty much stock. Now if you increase everything, then you might see different results for everything. Let's fire up play mode dual miner. It will start mining. Now this is a test at after changing the memory straps. Now, firing this up, it would increase the memory speed, the GPU clock speeds and so on. And it would also show the wattage. Now, this is at the stock speeds. So that's that. Now, let's try tweaking everything. Those are the stock speeds. Close it. Now, increase the memory. Lock. The maximum this would go is up to 20 to 50 and let's increase the GPU frequency or decrease the GPU frequency by underclocking it. So, uh, so an overclock on the memory and an underclock on the GPU. Let's fire it up, fire it up again. Now if you look at the wattages, keep, a, keep an eye out on it. Those would change significantly. And there you see the change in the hash rate. So I'll show a few different variations in the GPU and the um, memory. And just keep on doing this thing until you get or hit a sweet spot for the wattage and the stability. Then if you feel that the system is stable enough, just let Claymore run for 6 to 8 hours. And if it stays stable, it means that you have hit the stability mark and your rig will keep on running continuously. Now while this video goes on, I'll talk about the advantages. So first, after increasing the memory clock, or the first thing, after only changing the timings, you can see the increase in about uh, four to five mega hashes. Now this is quite significant 
by only just modding the BIOS. Then if you tweak everything, then you can get higher hash rates. But if you don't keep the power and control, it would consume a lot of power. At one point, the GPU hit about 155 watts. Then, uh, the things that I do is just setting the memory clock at the highest frequency, that is 20 to 50 megahertz. Then I tweak the, GP, uh, the GPU clock speed. This process took me about 10 to 12 hours, but I was able to hit the sweet spot. And by changing the um, voltage applied to the GPU, you can change the power draw. The lowest I hit was 60 watts du during mining. How cool is that? From 155 watts to 60 watts. But at that low power, I wasn't able to mine for much long and the hash rates were poor as well. The highest hash rate I was able to hit was 29.95 mega hashes on Windows 10. But after switching to Ethos, there's the Ethereum OS distro, which is based on Linux. It hits about 30.2 to 30.1 mega hashes per card. I'll make sure to make a video on Ethereum OS explaining its advantages and disadvantages. Now, these are the figures that I was able to achieve. I tried both single mining and dual mining with Claymore. And to be fair, I don't think dual mining is that efficient because while dual mining, the power draw increases, which ultimately increases the electricity bill. And the dual mining coins, they aren't of much value either. You can see about five to 10 cents a day extra. So keep that in mind while choosing everything. So thank you for watching this video. Like this video or dislike it, subscribe to the channel, share it, go through my other videos and see you next time. Ta-da!